Welcome to Wellness Radio with Dr. Jeanette Gallagher as your host. Her show discusses topics of health, wellness, and spirituality and is about discovering your place in this great universe from your cells to the cosmos. Along with her guest in casual conversation, she strives to ask the difficult questions that may be holding you back from a vibrant life and shares new ideas that may inspire you to make a change in your life that you only can see in your dreams. And now, here is Dr. Jeanette Gallagher. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Wellness Radio. This is Dr. Jeanette Gallagher, and it's a pleasure to have you with us this evening. Tonight, we are going to be talking about the energies that are out there. Dark, light, in between, seem to be very energetic these days in the year 2022. We're saying, I'm feeling something. It's pushing on me. I'm irritated. I'm angry. Where is that coming from? Is it past lives? Is it dimensions? Is it the feeling inside myself? Perhaps Chinese medicine? Oh, your liver maybe needs to be cleansed. Perhaps maybe you need to take some salt water, go around your house, clear out the energies in your closet and your walls. What is this all about? What we're talking about is how do you engage with the energy that is around you, the stories and that which you create of your world from inside of you, and how do you navigate your days? Are you feeling like things are bumping up against you? Well, let's explore those. What's bumping up against you? Are they ghosts? Are they energies in the evening? Are they elementals out in nature? Perhaps they are just something that feels dissonant and disharmonic to your body. Can you identify them? Can you be able to work with them? Can you cleanse them and release them? The same thing as light energy. We want to feel that moment of bliss. We want to feel clear and clean like we could fly and then dance in the ethers forever. Well, you kind of can't stay there. Yin and yang in Chinese medicine was never meant to be a round gray circle. It was meant to be we ebb and we flow within the energies. We feel and we sense them. We have a knowing and perhaps maybe a seeking kind of sense in our being. We say, mm, I don't know, but wow, I am really kind of uh, want to find out something different. Today, we are going to be talking to C.R. Campbell. Her wonderful book is Dark Goddess Magic, Rituals and Spells for Reclaiming Your Feminine Fire. Sometimes we say, oh, I just want to feel like I have the strength, I have some power, I have some magic deep inside me. It's not all out there. Perhaps we can create it from inside ourselves and learn how to navigate within the nature world, the energy world, and definitely within our own self-being. Ciara, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Ciara, I am so glad to have you. I, this book has been on my desk for quite a while, and I always say believe in divine timing, and I think this is a time where in the year 2022 people are saying, I'm opening up to this stuff, and there's a lot coming at me. Don't you think? I agree. Every, every, there's a, there's just so much energy to deal with, and so much um, shifting that it's you know it's it's about you know empowerment and and you know taking back our truth and and you know really exploring what that means for for us as individuals. You know, I think it's so interesting. So many people in the spiritual world are saying, well, raise your vibration, and then you go outside in nature and lay down in the grass and ground yourself. And I'm saying, dude, the earth is, is raising its vibration too. It's got a little bit of chaos itself. Why do you want me to go lay down in its vibration then? And I almost feel like I'm bifurcated, you know, <laughs> like I want to be in the high kind of ethers and then I want to go into earth and earth's shaking and shimmying right now. There's a lot of vortexes around. There's a lot of storms coming and going. Anyone noticing that, right? Right. Well, up here in the north, I mean, we had like snowstorm after snowstorm after snowstorm in April. And I mean, that's, I mean, usually we get a little bit, but it was just, it was just unrelenting. So it's, it's, I definitely hear you about nature definitely having she's she's got a different tone to her voice right now so yeah. 
So I think sometimes when we say we want to be able to feel our energy and kind of get an idea about it, you have to kind of make a conscious decision and settle into the energy, feel it for what it is, and have a conversation with it. Don't you think sometimes we say, oh, I felt that energy, ooh, and it was sticky, but I keep shoving it away. Well, it might keep showing up because it wants to talk to you. It wants to engage with you. Don't you think? I'm very much a, a believer in being present with whatever's here. There's always a message in it. You know, the, for me, it's about getting to the root of sort of what's rising and being able to sit with it, give it space to be able to breathe and, and be present for what it's trying to, you know, sort of tell me. You know what I loved? I, I was right, writing down in your book today so many comments um, that uh, right in your introduction, I had like so many things underlined. I said, that's me. <laughs> That's me, that's me, you know, especially the one easy to deal with. Who wants to be easy to deal with? Have not we all, at some point in our lives, had people will say, dude, man, you're just out of control. I mean, I'm dealing with that now. I hear that on a daily basis. You're out of control. You need to get, you got, you got, you got to get your issues together. You need time on the couch. How many times do we hear this, right? And we just have yeah. to, it's like put up the hand and say, stop. Not my reality. And reverse this energy. Yes? Yeah, I, one of my biggest things is empowerment. And it drives me crazy when people try to put you in a box or try to, you know, downplay your truth or, or keep mm-hmm. you silent. And it's something that, you know, it's prevalent in our daily daily world and in, the, you know, a lot of the things we're seeing rising right now. And it's just, it's so important to be able to embody our own truth and be able to, you know, not be not be silenced. And, and that's just... Uh, you know, I, I'm a fire girl. I'm a, you know, Aries mm-hmm. in so many signs. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you know, me being silenced is one of those things where it's like, no, you know, you got to be able to speak it. And so it's just kind of what I've always wanted to, what I've always stri- sort of, you know, I strive to do is just sort of help to empower others to, you know, step into their power mm-hmm. and use their voice and not be, not be silenced because we shouldn't be silenced. So. Well, I think also, too, you know, I grew up in a very dark home. It was dark energy beyond belief. I mean, poltergeist, the whole deal, you know, ghosts, everything. Yeah, we got them, you know. And um, I danced with them, felt them, sensed them, and knew about all of them. Yet the biggest thing was is that those in my home also were um, don't talk, um, don't be seen, don't be hard, yeah. you're stupid, you're this, yeah. you're that, blah, da, 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 da. you know, when in essence what they had was their own energy, but they didn't know how to use it or explore it or clear it and cleanse it or to expand themselves further. Don't you think that sometimes when we meet people that are pretty much of that energy, they really haven't stepped into the power of a knowing? Yes? It's it's so hard for so many people because they just, they, when we're taught something is bad or evil or dark, it's like everybody suppresses it. And mm-hmm. not everybody, but some people are taught to suppress it, you know, whether it's by, you know, their own, you know, um, ancestral wounds or whether it's, you know, baggage from their own lives. It. Right. They try to suppress that energy. And I'm, I'm, I'm always encouraging people to sit with what's happening. Like it's, it, sometimes it's definitely not easy, but, but suppressing it generally just makes it expand and it just makes it grow and it festers and it, you know, feeds on other things and, and sort of has a tendency to sort of envelop everything that's sort of, you know, occurring. And it's just so important to be able to see this, like it's rising to be seen for a reason. So I just mm-hmm. wish people would be able to, but there's so many religions and so many different paths that sort of yeah. teach suppressing all of that. So it's, it's really no wonder that there's so much lineage of that, you know, occurring. And I really feel like we're in a bit of a, you know, a shift, you know, globally, you know, to kind of right. sort of break away from that and sort of embody these new truths and, you know, our own personal truths and what that means for us, you know, being able to digest it in a way that's, you know, works for us, not just the way it's been done in the past sort of thing. And I think also, too, it's so vitally important to be able to become aware. I think if anything, your book is really about awareness. I would say read through the entire book, give it a good sitting, say good, fantastic. Then close it and wait. See what shows up. See what's calling to you. See what um, commands your attention. It may be something that says, you know, I never realized 
all of these aspects, just as I did when I read through your book, I had underlining on almost every single page, you know. I was part of that, and I could see um, how we can feel, how we can navigate our way, but also, too, what has come forth for us. And I think that's so very important because sometimes we feel like, oh, but I don't want to be that. That's wrong. Let's just take the word fear or anger. Everybody's got fear and anger. Chinese medicine, you know, let's talk about your kidneys and your liver. We would turn it around, fear and anger. Do you need to continue to go to the therapist for the next 100 years to deal with your fear and anger? All you're doing is spewing it onto them, you know. <laughs> What's the point? So I think the idea is, is that when you talk about fear and anger in your book, it's about let's do something about it. Let's see what it's about. Can we shift it, right? Because we're not only shifting ourselves, we are then, as we present to the world, we are shifting the world, yes? That's true. That is very true. I think also, too, when we talk about your book about the feminine energy, a lot of times people have been saying, you know, now it's time for women to take over, and they get stuck into that concept of, you know, the women are going to put down the men or the women are going to put down the other side. And When in essence, haven't we been in many of our incarnations, both male or female, or perhaps one without labels? Oh, for sure. I agree 100%. And I, I, you know, I speak a lot to the, you know, women's embodiment of the feminine, but of course the feminine it, it exists within it all you know, all aspects and all incarnations and in all embodiments. Mm -hmm. And um, most of, I'm really wanting to sort of redefine what it means, you know, because for so long we were taught that feminine was this motherly um, pink, you know, feminine energy, you know, and it, it invokes right. a memory. And, you know, when you say that word, and that's not what I mean, because there's so many different aspects to the feminine, which is why I went towards the dark goddesses, you know, Kali, you know, um, you know, Aradia, you know, the darker, darker God, mm -hmm. you know, protection and, and, and warrior energy, because these are, you know, aspects of the feminine too. It's not, it's not just about the soft things that we're taught we are supposed to be, <laughs> you know, it's, it's about, you know, these fierce aspects of the feminine that are so, you know, vital within all, all things like, like the earth. We're talking about how fierce the earth is right now, you know, and, you yeah. know, that's a fierce, you know, energy. So. But also to the idea for me, hold on. <clears throat> but also to the idea of this pink, you know, loving mother energy or feminine energy, maybe what people have not experienced in their lifetime and they're going, mm, I don't have a grip on it. So they kind of tend to call it a patriarch commanding and they become over domineering instead of being able to um, work within you know, how the energy is actually transitioning, they become um, more um, uh, forceful and maybe uh, use it maybe not for good. And perhaps maybe you can see, as you share in your book, you do use energy for good things, for transitioning things, for cleansing and clearing things. So that is for good, right? Because you share in your book the one sentence, it says that, um, hold on, I have it underlined. Dang, nabbit. Mm -hmm. You have in your book where it says dark goddesses are not evil. And I think that's important no. to emphasize, yes? I agree. Um, it's just, it's so vitally important for me to, for everybody to mm -hmm. sort of embody their truth and be able to sort of step into that place where they feel, you know, We've been told for so long that, right, you know, we shouldn't dark, you know, evil, all these things, they're always tied into each other. And it's not, they're not dark, they're not evil, you know, they're not, it's not a bad thing to be fierce. It's not a bad thing to be, you know, a little louder. It's not, it's not a bad thing to, you know, stand up for your truth and, and, you know, be protective or, or any of these things. We've always been taught these are things we shouldn't be doing. They're not feminine because they're things that maybe the ruling, you know, Mm -hmm. class at the time or whatever didn't necessarily we're not we're not you know we're not useful if we're fierce you know we're we're a problem right. with we're fierce and that's sort of sort of what I see so much of now it's like you know we need to be a problem you know as a as a society as a you know as a 
rising across the earth. We need to be a problem for the powers that be because we need to be able to express our truth and we need to do what's best for, you know, us and our our, our fellow siblings across the earth sort of thing. So I, I'm a fierce, I'm a little think, Amazon. It's just kind of... <laughs> yeah. I think also to the idea is that when people say you're a troublesome, you're a trouble this, that, or the other, in essence, truly what you're doing is you're stating something to be able to see the reaction, the trigger, and allow others to find their power. You know, many times we believe that it, yeah. we're doing it for our reasons so that we can create turmoil. In essence, it might be that we want others to question. We want others to wake up. And sometimes that's what it takes. Do you think? That's true. That is true. Well, when we rise, I mean, you know, when we speak our truth, you, know, you, can't, you can't speak your truth without somebody else being empowered to speak theirs. I fully believe that. Yeah. That's why I think it's so yeah. important for as many people as possible, you know, to embody their truth, you know, not necessarily the way somebody else would define it, not necessarily the way the boxes have been checked in the past, but to embody it in the way that, you know, they've been, that they're incarnated here to be. And that's their definition of it. It's not up to anybody else to define that for them. How about the idea, before we start into the context of your book, is when you are embodied into your power and to help or to assist or watch others to rise up into theirs and they don't, isn't the time that you just say, be well, and then you continue on your path? Because sometimes I think I've seen a lot of people that they would step in their power and they would keep bending down to try to lift others up and they in turn become broken. Yeah, I, th- I think there's a, I think there's, th- there's a path to that too. Like there's a, like, it's, it's just, there's something for them to learn in that place, you know, for them to mm-hmm. be able to, if it's repeating, you know, there's something else there they need to sort of, you know, discover for themselves. I've, I've been stuck in patterns before too. And it's like, okay, you keep doing the same loop de loop. It's like, you got to sit down and, and see what is this, you know, what is this for? You know, what, why, why does this keep rising? You know? And it's like, there's always a message there. There's always something. And, you know, it's, it's, it's the repetition. It's that like, Hey, you know, here's another sign. <laughs> Hello. You know, okay. and then you sort of sit with it and then, but it's got to happen in its own time. Like you were saying earlier, you know, it's everything in its own time. So. Right. Because your book, Dark Goddess Magic, you share, it says how to use this book, you know, is working with the energy of the dark goddesses. I think the first thing is, is just to read through the book, you know, lightly to see where it's all about. But once you can find a goddess page, you say, this sounds so interesting. It just draws me in. And just be able to do some of the rituals, to do some of the attentions, and do some of the offerings. I think that's what we're really talking about is read an invocation. Mm, That sounds really interesting. How about their story about the goddess? How about the affirmation? Or maybe you say, you know what? I just noticed that I've got all of those things on the altar in my room, and I'm going, whoa. Maybe I could read a little bit more, and maybe I am of this sense, and I can be able to bring up my power, you know, kind of like clean off some of my wings or my tether lines, so to speak, and then go on to the next step. Isn't that what we're talking about, about your book? It is, and I, I tried really hard to make it accessible, you know, on various different levels. I wanted to mm-hmm. introduce the goddesses just to sort of, you know, give a, a, a version of their, you know, their story and talk about their energy and, and different ways that they could be, ex- like how they, you know, what they embodied, you know, and, and, and showed a few different ways that they could be sort of accessed, but then open it up to interpretation. So, because it's really okay. about, you know, the personal journey and how, the, how you know, an individual works with them and connects with them. That's, you know, important. Let's talk about the idea of hexes and curses because a lot of times people will say, oh man, I don't want to step into that. I just don't know what's going to happen. I definitely know when I moved into this apartment, man, I don't know what the energy was, but I wailed for like two or three weeks. I mean, it was like, holy crap, what is this coming from? And I could only see it in retrospect, looking back, what it was about. I couldn't see it when I was going through it. Don't you think that sometimes you say, I'm going to stay away from things because I fear them when in essence you might have already had your two feet suck in the pot. <laughs> that's no, it's true. I um I definitely got a uh, I, I get a mixed reaction definitely from the hexes and, and curses whenever I talk to mm-hmm. talk to people about it. But I usually akin it to, you know, people have a very 
bad view of it because of, you know, maybe, well, there's media and then there's every movie right. you've ever seen involving a, a witch or a sorceress or something, right? It's hexes and curses. Um, yeah. But I mean, when you look at the base of so many of them, it's protection. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, I don't really feel like there's a problem with protecting yourself. Like if somebody's coming at you or something's happening, I don't see why there's a problem to protect yourself. Like who taught you that you couldn't protect yourself? Yes. You know, and mm-hmm. it, it, it boggles my mind. It's like, there's absolutely no reason not to protect yourself. So it's like, that's just how I feel about it. I, I view them more as protection than anything else. And that's usually how it, you know, how I embody that. So. I think that's so very important because after, you know, the wailing and then I had cleared out, I found out more information. I kind of worked to clear things out in my space. And then one night in dream, I had one of those, um, you know, those um, things that you push across your lawn to be able to sow grass seed, you know, that has like wheels and a little bucket on it. Well, I was walking around my apartment complex outside the bigger building of it and I was sowing salt. I went, oh. Okay, you know, I must have been putting up my protection grid. You know what I mean? But again, too, yeah. I just thought it was a dream at that time. I let it pass, and then I look back in retrospect. I said, ah, I'm protected here. I'm good. And, you know, I had done it in some space and time, and it was good. So don't you think we have messages all along about how we can assist ourselves once we open up the storybook? No, it's true. Uh, there's so many messages and there's so much, you know, rising and so much to learn energetically from, you know, what we experience in our daily lives and the dream world. And I mean, how many times do you go out of body? And, I mean, I come back and I'm going, crap, open my eyes. And say, Dang, I'm still here. What's the difference? You know, <laughs> um, even last night I can remember I'm, I'm turning over a bottle of Tums in somebody's house and I'm going, and when I woke up, I said, I don't even know anyone that has thumbs. There's not even any in my house. <laughs> Boy, that's weird. <laughs> you know? So oh, I just wow. I just file it in the bank and I let it go because it'll show up. Let's talk for a second about the that's goddess true. of magic. Can you share about the goddess of magic? Because I think I was really I wrote ah, crone, that's me, I've got it, that's me, I'm the goddess of magic. And then when I looked at some of the things that were associated with it, I said, ah, I already have all of those, especially the plants and oils. Cypress tree outside of my window, I had gathered some of its leaves when it fell off from a storm, put it in a jar. I've got lavender on the counter. I have sage. Anise is like, I just can't get over it. You know, I've got belladonna and homeopathics. And, you know, I've got all of these things. The mint tea is on my counter. And it's, I have definitely delved into this aspect. Can you talk about this goddess? I love the goddess Hecate, um, or Hecate, depending how you want to say it. It just depends kind of mm-hmm. how you pronounce it. Um, I love her. I absolutely do. She's um, she's very powerful, and she's, you know, very useful to use at the crossroads when we're kind of having times with confusion because she offers so much clarity. Um, uh-huh. I always loved that she was embodied with a, with a dog. You know, she had these familiars, and she was always busy with dogs. And of course, I have a dog, and I love dogs. But um, the um, it, it, she was just such a powerful goddess for for you know, connecting with these darker aspects, you know, like the thing is, you know, like the, the unknown, you know, like the, the sorceress aspect, you know, like the, the crone aspect, you know, um, c- right. connecting with, you know, creating rituals and spells. And um, she's so good for being able to sort of offer us, um, she's the goddess of the crossroads. So she's good for being able to offer us, you know, some insight and clarity, you know, when we're maybe confused on the path and we've, you know, got all these choices to make and we're not really sure where to go, you know, she can offer us that insight. So Yeah, and, you know, it talks in your book. You you give some recipes and some words and mantras. It's great. And it says, which bottle of protection? You know, it's so interesting. I have outside on my patio, which is very tiny, I have a bottle of war water. You know, I had some water from the swamp and a nail and some um, moss off of the trees, you know, Spanish moss, and I put it in the jar, and it just Mm kind of sits out there. And I said, hmm. I don't know. It just sits there, but it's okay. You know, in some essence, that was what I made at that time. But yet I have all of these wonderful plants around it that are kind of what I call companions. You know, um, I have an aloe plant and I stuck some old turmeric root that was drying up on my counter. I stuck it in the bottom and now I get these great um, big leaves and it protects the aloe when it's too Mm -hmm. hot. 
you know, and then I threw in some morning glory flowers on the seeds, and they just kind of weave their way underneath in the shadow of the leaves. So I think the idea is, is that we aren't out there to harm anyone or anything. We are out there to also engage the magic of nature, flowers, oils, plants, and crystals, and bring them in as their power and their energy of oneness. Isn't that what we're trying to do, basically? That's it. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. And I love that you, you, uh, you know, you went with, you know, your intuition on that and just created it. You know, you weren't, you, you just created something. And you, I love that. That's just how, like, that's kind of, you know, what it's all about. Yeah. And I think it's kind of interesting in a way, because as I said before, you don't know what, when you're doing it, you just kind of do it. It's in retrospect where the story plays itself out. And I think that's very important, too, because as you read through your book, Dark Goddess Magic, we aren't saying, was this today? Am I doing this today? We're really looking at our soul, our spirit aspect from past dimensions. It might have been in a past life. It might be something that was yesterday or today, or it might be something that was decades ago. And you say, oh, I noticed that. Because when you call it forth, you're calling forth, the energy of that moment in time, right? That's true. Yeah. And I think sometimes when you talk about your book about affirmations, when you call, a, you know, that energy force, you're sitting with it and you could feel it. Um, don't you think there's many times, um, I have this one thing that I did. Um, I had collected a bunch of uh, thunder water, thunder rainwater. So like I set out a glass bowl and it was thundering and raining like crazy in lightning and I collected the rainwater and I put it in a jar and I just set it to the side and then a few months later the magnolias, you know, were blossoming all over the place. So I took the magnolia flower, set it in the thunder water in a glass bowl outside and the essence from the strength of the magnolia came into the water And then I put it back in the jar. And now, even many years later, I can put my hands on there and feel the energy of the strength of the magnolia. Do you think that we are able to access that on a daily basis when we're doing affirmations, invocations, rituals, I'm a circle, when we are calling forth these energies? Can we bring that forth? How do we engage with it? I think so, for sure. For sure, mm-hmm. I do. I, re- I really, I really think you can bring that awareness to, you know, connect with that on a daily basis. And how do you engage with it? Because your book really shows how to engage with energy and to be able to um, waken up to the stories. In other words, you have words here, and these are great words to start with, but then you'll also create your own, do you think? Oh, agreed. Like, that's why I offered so many things in the, you know, the goddess tool belt, as it were, you know, like, there's different, you know, associations, and then, you know, there's affirmations, like you said, and visualizations, and just, you know, the tools to help, you know, the readers be able to, you know, kind of decide for themselves how they wanted, you know, their, their story to sort of embody, and they could, you know, decide for themselves how to, you know, make it their own. Let's talk about the goddess of the underworld that you share in your book. And there was one sentence I underlined. It says, embodiment of the shadow aspects of the self, we have been taught we need to hide. Oh, Lord, who hasn't been told all those things, just as I've already shared? Right. We've all all been told, don't you dare do that. I'll, I'll never forget. My father used to say to me when I had curlers in my hair to go out, you know, because we didn't have hair dryers then. This was in the 50s and 60s. And he would say, you going to a wedding? Where are you going? Where are you going with them things in your hair? And he'd make me take them out. You know what I mean? And it was like, because we couldn't shine in our own self. Do you think that a lot of those residue stories need to be cleared so we can shine? I think we do need to, you know, work with that. I mean, you know, if it's present for us, we definitely do need to sit with that energy and and sort of, you know, be with what it needs to, you know, teach us and how we can transform it. Let's talk about some of the tools that you use in the book. You talk about, um, you know, you talked about tapestry with one of the goddesses. And it's interesting because, and it was the same one, the tapestry, I think it was Indian and American or it was Native American. Um, Native Indian. But at any rate, I have on my window right next to um, my cedar chest where I have all my um, crystals and everything, 
there is a piece of material that I got at the fabric store, and it's definitely woven like a tapestry. And it was kind of in the Native American pattern. And I just cut across it to kind of cover the window to make the room a little darker because it was always bright here. And eventually over time, it started to just loosen its threads. And there's these long, like, threads on the bottom now. And a piece will fall off, and I was just put it into you know, the mortar and pedestal and kind of keep it on the page. But isn't that about being able to see how we're all woven together and how things will unfurl? That's a tool. I mean, that, that definitely the tapestry sure. was a tool, right? And the thread. And you For use sure. that. I do. I, that was Spider Woman, I believe, the uh, goddess of fate and leaving the fate. Mhm. Yeah. What about the um, goddess of the wild wood? You talk about uh, Medina is from Lithuania. Mm. Do we tend to be able to go back to goddesses that have some lineage, ancestral lineage to us? But also, too, you said that the go- the, bo- um, the goddess of the Baltic area, and I wrote above on this page, elementals. Is Medina about elementals? She's very connected to earth energy. I connect really, really heavily with her. Um, you know, I just, my family's from, you know, sort of that whole area. And it's mm-hmm. just, um, it's, I love that I'm a nature goddess, a nature witch, whatever you want to call it. I've, mm-hmm. I've, I, I'm not a big fan of putting labels on things. But if I have to put a label, that's always what I pick. Because I'm always, you know, outside. I'm always planting something. I'm always planting a tree. I'm always you know, doing something like that. Medina was so important right. to me, you know, with her, her animals and, and, and the way she would, you know, protect the animals of the forest by tricking humans. And I, I just, I, I'm behind, just, I, I resonated with that yeah. so much, being able to like, you know, protect the animals in the forest and stuff from the, you know, human um, interference. And I just, I resonated so heavily with that. And she is just such a powerful goddess. I just absolutely adore her. Do you think that I can remember distinctly in my teen years walking through the forest and into the woods and I would hear voices calling out behind me. I would turn around and see shadows, you know, behind the trees and things like that. Do you think that um, the elementals and that sense of forest energy senses that we're open to it or senses that we have been part of this goddess? I think so. And I think that they wish the, you know, that your environment whispers, you know, messages to you all the time if you're open to hear them, you know, whether it's Mm -hmm. in the form of, you know, an animal or whether it's the form of that kind of symbology, whether, you know, if you subscribe to that or, you know, in the, in, in nature itself, you know, in the the weather patterns or anything like that, there's so much you can kind of get from, from that information, I feel. You have a technique you share in your book. It says, wash away the muck. And last night in sleep, I had written down, the veils need to be cleansed. And I'm going, oh, okay. This morning, I didn't know why I was picking up. I have a bag of Dead Sea salts. And I said, hmm, these things, I need to engage with these. And it was interesting. (laughs) And I picked up your book and read, wash away the muck. So there is a pattern in which the messages, the goddesses, the energy will show us and guide us if we are open to be able to say, oh, cool, and just file it away until each piece of the puzzle works together, do you think? For sure. How about the idea that when we don't connect to any of the goddesses, we kind of feel, ooh, that one doesn't feel good. That one doesn't feel, ooh, I don't even want to go there. I know that I had looked and I was definitely reading about one and I put a big X on the page and I said, oh no, that one doesn't feel good. (laughs) That one is not resonating to me. It was a goddess of protection. Isn't that interesting? I said, oh, I don't like cats. I don't like anything about this story. This story just doesn't feel good. Go (laughs) away. (laughs) Right? What about that when something like that comes up for us? If it's not resonating for you, then definitely don't don't connect with it. Um, like it's it's totally. There's two schools of thought. You know, there, there's a school of thought that you know if you're resisting something, you know there's something there that you should learn, or there's you know some a message for you, right. or you know there's a school of thought. But if it's not resonating with you, why force it, right? So definitely feel into sort of what it's there for you. If you completely don't resonate with it, then it's just not your avenue to that. You know, meet, there, she's not the only goddess of protection. You know, she's not the only one. 
So, you know, there's other avenues to be able to do, you know, that sort of energy. Um, Because not everything has to resonate, right? Like it it doesn't, the whole point of it is to be able to find what works for you, not to force it into some box again, right? Yeah, definitely. Because there's others out there that are able to help you with the same form of protection or something right. that you're able to say, yeah, you know, that's something, oh, this this feels better to me. Like the Phantom Queen, you know, Moringa. And, you know, I mean, I said, oh, Irish, it's okay, good. You know, fierce, battle-hearted sorceress. I'm going, yes, you got it, girl. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and, it, and that I almost had a vision of, you know, like the st- really high stiletto and digging it in you know, kind of idea, saying, oh, yes, yeah. I'm here kind of idea. So I think that we can say, ah, I'm good to go. Maybe I don't need the protection. Maybe I can be in my own power. Isn't that the story we might be looking for? <coughs> oh, that's exactly right. And I mean, it, it's about how you embody the story. It's, it's These are just tools, right? These are just tools in order mm-hmm. to help you access that energy. But I mean, you know, it's totally how you interpret it and how you embody it. Can we talk about offerings? Now, this is a question I've had so many times from others. Um, you, um, you have out your altar, and you may leave, like my grandmother, I always leave a peppermint patty there. Or I have mm-hmm. um, cherry tobacco that's always out there. Because I know those two, for my grandfather, they always are protection source for me. And, um, but then, what do you do with those offerings when you're finished, definitely you leave them for a period of time, but then people will say, oh, do you just throw it in the garbage? Do you eat it? Do you get rid of it? What do you do with it? Can you share that? For me, my, my, my offerings are generally natural. Like I'll usually, I've got a garden. Um, so I'll always collect mm-hmm. like, you know, petals and stuff throughout the seasons and herbs throughout the seasons and stuff like that. And um, I'll usually leave uh, my offerings are usually something natural, some, some sage from my garden or some flower petals or, or, or mm-hmm. some bird seeds. And I usually leave the offerings outside just so it can kind of go back to nature. I always, I always bring it back to nature. That's usually how it goes. So I always usually right. tend to do something like that or maybe a piece of sweet grass if I'm lucky enough to find some out in, the, out in my, you know, wanderings or anything like that. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because a lot of times people will say, you know, the idea of you put, like, I'll always put coffee cup down, you know, and I'll have another coffee cup for myself. So in essence, we're going to sit there and we're going to drink together and we have a conversation, you know, and then I just put the, you know, cups in the dishwasher or I will take something and I will kind of pour it outside. Like, um, mm-hmm. what did I have? I had a plant, you know, and it had expired. And I says, well, I don't throw this in the garbage. So I took it outside and I actually mm-hmm. buried it. Or yeah. I had a candle from yeah. a ritual and I buried it outside. And I said, you know, I'm sure there's another purpose or another way. We can also do that, right? Of course, actually, that's a great way of getting rid of like house plant soil and stuff like that. If you've got a plant that's expired, it, as long as it's not diseased, because you don't want to bring that into your garden either or into your yard mm-hmm. if there's something wrong with the plant. But if the um, if the plant is you know expired for natural reasons or it's just its time, um, totally take that soil and put it outside. I do that all the time because it's you know why would you want to waste that you know wonderful right. you know nutrients like put it put it in the earth and and you know you know top up a low spot or <laughs> or you know just put it in your garden. Mm-hmm. What about the idea of love? Because this comes up an awful lot in goddesses and about our energy and, you know, or lovers or things like that. Oh, well, I want to get rid of this person. Their energy is bad for me. Or I want to draw a lover to me. Or I feel like I need to engage in that loving kind of sense of being. When in essence, really what we're trying to do is capture that energy form versus what we've really been doing as humans is tacking words on it and looking for an outcome, don't you think? Yeah, I think definitely the expression of love needs to be our own. Like, I, I it's, it's so hard when everything is so saturated in the media and in, mm-hmm. you know, movies and books and everything like this, you know, for how many years? I mean, it's been... <laughs> you know, it's not just it's not just our generation or the generation before. I mean, this has been right. eons. You know, the 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 greats and the you know Greek philosophers, and it's it's always a subject, right? Because it's immortal. It's one of these things that you know sort of transcends time and space. But I think it's really important to sort of analyze for ourselves what that means to us. You know, what what is love to us? You know, what is mm-hmm. the relationship to us? And it's important to be able to define that sort of for ourselves. 
Because I think also, too, the word intent. You really need to know what your intent is. You know, I can distinctly remember uh, someone had said something to me, and I said, well, I was looking for someone that would come home all the time or be present all the time and be around all the time. And um, I didn't put in the other parts of the intention that I wanted someone that was a loving <laughs> companion or that, you know, those other parts. I just said, I just want someone coming home all the time. And I got exactly what I wanted. I didn't get the other parts. <laughs> and I kind of went, dang, now, you know, I was looking for a fuller flower, but I, I kind of just sowed one seed. We have to be careful with intent, right? Well, we definitely, I mean, intent and clarity and clarifying our intentions and, and looking for what we want. We definitely, that's why it's good to kind of keep like a, you know, keep a, like almost like a little web of the different, you know, things or whatever that are wanted or, or needed or what you yeah. really want. But it is about like connecting with what you, what you want and need. Cause then you're able to, you know, if you're, if you're clear on what you want and need, then you're able to ask for what you want or need. Right. So it's, you're better able to set that intent. So. Right, because I think we've gotten so stuck of knowing that our life is this linear path and we're creating our own dichotomy that's called our identity and we just exist in our own world that's called the I. You know what I mean? But in essence, truly, yeah. we're a web of nature. We're a cosmic being. Everything is about magic and energy. And if we could see it from that point of view, then everything is playing and in an interplay, so to speak, right? Right. Yeah. Can we talk for a second in closing about the goddess of fire, destruction, and judgment? I underlined, oh, of course, on the first page. She knows all things. Oh, my goodness, do I hear that all the time. I would hear that from people who would tell me that since I was <laughs> little. So probably yesterday, you know, yeah, she's a know-it-all. She knows everything. <laughs> and in essence, I'm sort of like, well, sorry. <laughs> I just, you know, I'm an avatar and I've got the Rolodex. What do you want to know? And I kind of set it out <laughs> as that, <laughs> you know. So can you share a little bit about this goddess? Uh, the goddess Sekhmet, uh, the destroyer, you know. The, that's the thing about destruction. I mean, it's transformation, right? Like there's no such thing right. as, destro well, you're destroying something to create something else. So it's a transformation and she's a transformation goddess and, and she's just, she's so wonderful for connecting with when, you know, you're looking for that transformation, you know, that right. destruction and, and moving on from, from kind of what's left and, you know, being able to kind of release that and kind of move in the direction of something that you're kind of more looking for. So I really, she's really good for stuff like that, for being able to connect with that, you know, awakening, moving on, you know, transformation sort of energy. Yeah, because you know what? I think a lot of times we think that we are making things from old. In other words, transformation. And I've used the word transfiguration. In other words, it's stepped up. And then all of that other, you know, when you say about destruction, I say it's, it's you know, when you take a yin and a yang and poof in the middle, it doesn't exist, either one. So it's the destruction kind of is that poof moment where things just, ah, gone. And it's not destruction, creation, recreation, all those other things. What it is is it just doesn't exist anymore. It's sort of like, you know when you have an argument with somebody but you step into your power and that person doesn't even show up anymore or the argument or the words you can't remember? That's that poof moment. Right? Right. right. It's kind of interesting when we do that. In closing, let's talk about a beach stone release. You know, um, many times people will say, um, you know, in shamanism and stuff, they will say, you know, breathe into a rock from outside, you know, and just let all of your energy go into it and then cast the rock outside or put it on your altar or, you know, go out and bury it, do whatever you need to do. And I think sometimes that um, when you can let your energy go into something from nature and you release it, you're giving it to others to transform it, to change it, and to energize it also, too, for you. It's sort of like um, we cast out our prayers, that's our conscious mind going, you know. But in essence, we're saying use a tool to be able to engage with. Isn't your book truly about what are some tools that you can actually harness, hold in your hand, and be able to create and empower yourself? It is for sure. I'm like I said before, I'm always I I love using easy to access um 
things like a stone or a stick or right. whatever because well, I mean like I'm in nature here there's mountains and there's you know trees and everything like this but mm-hmm. it's um it's just so vitally important to me to be able to use the energy of the earth and to be able to sort of you know the earth is just so powerfully healing in that way and I mean you give that back to the earth and you're giving you know a piece of you know you're 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 not tainting the earth with anything, you know, unnatural, you know, you're literally right. using it for healing and, and that kind of transmutation. So, you know, it's so interesting. My granddaughter, she came to my house for the first time and, and she walked in and she says, here, grandma, this is for you. And she gave me a rock. And my mother said, <laughs> her mother said, um, I don't know, everybody she meets, she gives a rock and I'm going, we yeah. know all about that. I'm just not going to say it to her mother. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's right. and it's it's like we're yeah. so hoping and praying that she doesn't become shut down. You do you know what I mean? Because children yeah. are definitely in that space and open, don't you think? They are. You just. I love that you said that. I smiled immediately because I used to do that all the time. My mom always talks about me bringing rocks and sticks, or I would find this and that, and I would bring it. And it was important and it meant something. It had a you know a message, and I'd always bring it for her. So right. <laughs> I love that you said that because. I think awesome. that's so vitally important, don't you think? It is, completely, completely. Well, her, all right, it was such a pleasure to engage with you, with you today. I mean, we could probably talk forever, but we've come to the end of our <laughs> time <could>. today. <coughs> because, I mean, almost everything in this book, I'm like, that's me, that's me, that's me. And what are we really <laughs> looking for when we re- finished reading the book is we're looking for validation. Is it really me? Did I really experience that? Oh, can I perhaps dance with the words or the energy in this book? And that's when it comes out that others will listen to this show, perhaps they'll contact you or I, is about saying, yes, you did experience it. Isn't that cool? Now what do you want to do with it? Isn't that what we're encouraging others to explore? Right, exactly, to explore it kind of in their own embodiment. Yeah, because so many people need to have validation that it's okay or that it's, you know, it's almost, uh, just as I'm saying that, I picture a little girl and she's got this little box of secrets and the the top is kind of on crooked Mm. and it's a little bit dirty and it's got like this little like mouse kind of sticking its head out and it's almost as if she's saying, can we open the box of secrets? But she's bringing it to someone to ask, can we? And that's what we're inviting you in is saying, yes, we can help you open your box of secrets, right? Right, and use it for, like, the empowerment and you're, like, connecting with it. And it's not bad. It's not, you know, it's not evil. It's not any of those things. Yeah. It's, you know, it's okay. Kind of cool. Well, Ari, it was such a pleasure to speak with you. Can you share with the listeners how to find out more information about your work? Uh, you can find my me on Facebook, The Goddess Circle Era, or The Goddess Circle. Um, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and um, TikTok, The Goddess Circle Era. You can find me on my website, www.thegoddesscircle.net, or you can find me at my email, info at thegoddesscircle.net. Very good, Well, Ari. It was such a pleasure. We thank you so much for enjoying this time with us today because I just, I just love this stuff. It's sort of like we, I just love to dance in the ethers. And, um, you know, I had, I had said to my one um, granddaughter, I says, we're going to go dance in the moon. She says, do you think my mm-hmm. mom will let me? And I went, oh, dear, oh. we're just not going <laughs> to tell her. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I think let's all nourish everybody together. So we thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's been wonderful. If you'd like to find out more information about C.R.A. Campbell, again, the book we spoke about today is Dark Goddess Magic, Rituals and Spells for Reclaiming Your Feminine Fire. Please do click on the link on the bottom of today's show page to go directly to her website for more information. And check out all of her social media venues. They always have something popping up that you can engage with. And you say, ah, this is really cool. I'd love to dance with that today. It is about having a creative nature opening up something more than this, this world that we've created we believe we're stuck in, and saying, I just, want to ex- I just want to explore something different, and this book is a great start. We have something so much more to ourselves. Are we open to the opportunity? Thank you so much for joining us today. This is Dr. Jeanette Gallagher, and until tomorrow, have a great day. Today we discussed many life-changing concepts. 
Who do you turn to and how do you know what is best when faced with a health crisis? Dr. Jeanette is a patient advocate. She listens to the patient, the doctors, and the family, clarifies the health issues and concerns, then helps the patient make the best choices going forward. If you would like help implementing change into your life and health, we can talk and see where you are stuck and how to improve the quality of your life. Check the link on the bottom of today's show page or visit drjeanettegallagher.com to schedule a phone appointment today.